Hello folks, today I'm going to show you how to trigger manual snapshots from your Elasticsearch clusters. Say for example you have an Elasticsearch cluster with a lot of documents and you want to migrate it to a newer cluster, then you cannot do it with automatic snapshots. You need to take a manual snapshot, push it to your S3, then import it into your new cluster. So let us go ahead and see how to do that. So here we are in the GitHub article where all the steps that are required to take a manual snapshot has been documented. So I made a simple flowchart so that we can walk us through how what are the steps that are required. First, we need an S3 bucket. We are going to create an S3 bucket and then we are also going to create an IAM role which will have permissions to that S3 bucket and an user who can assume this role and then trigger the Elasticsearch domain to take a backup to your S3 bucket. So all the steps that are required are documented here. So let us go ahead and see how we can do that. So the first step is to create an S3 bucket. So let us go ahead and do that. Here I am in my S3 console. Let us go ahead and put in the bucket name here. And I'm just going to put in my bucket also in Frankfurt because my Elasticsearch cluster is in Frankfurt. So my bucket has been created. As of now, there is nothing in my bucket. So the next step is to go ahead and create an IAM role. So I'm just going to take this role name and I'm, let us go ahead and create that. So I'm going to choose EC2 here, but in a short while we will change that because the permissions that are required for uh, my uh, role are going to be different. So I'm just going to put in my role name here, click on create role. And my role has been created. And we need, as of now, if you notice, we didn't give any specific permissions now because the permissions required are for my S3 bucket and also for my Elasticsearch cluster. So if you notice, when we created a bucket, we also get an ARN something like this. And that ARN has been put in here as well. So if you're going to create a different bucket, uh, then you need to put in update your bucket name here and here as well. So this is the policy that we need to attach it. So I'm just going to copy this and go ahead and create an inline policy here. I'm just going to choose JSON and then go ahead and review the policy. Uh, looks like I made some errors in my JSON policy. I'm just going to quickly check it out. There were some leading spaces here, so I just deleted them. And I'm just going to name the policy ES allow S3 write. So one inline policy allows my role to write data to my S3 bucket. So the next thing is adding a trust relationship. What we are basically doing is allowing Elasticsearch to assume this role so that it can write to that S3 bucket. So we are going to add this trust relationship here. Go to trust relationships, edit it. As of now, you can see here it is EC2. What we are going to do is we are going to change it to ES now. So that's all it's happening here. So update the role. So the second prerequisite step of creating an IAM role is also done. The next one is going ahead and creating an IAM user. So what we have done is I've already created an IAM user with the same name here. But uh, you see here there are no permissions right now. So let us go ahead and add the permissions that is given here. So you see here there are a couple of updates that we need to make. One is the account ID and followed by my IAM role name. So if you're going to use a different role name, you need to update that and you also have to update your Elasticsearch domain name also here. So update your account ID and then your domain name. So let us go ahead and do that. So let us go ahead and attach an inline policy. Once again, JSON, remove the existing code and see here, see here I have updated my account ID and followed by my role. And here also I have updated my account ID and followed by my Elasticsearch domain name. So if I go to Elasticsearch and under domains, you will find out your domain name. And here my domain name is called as es-flowlogs. So I have updated my role uh, domain name also here. So let's go ahead and review this policy and everything is good here. Allow role, allow user to assume role. You can have any name here. Let us go ahead and create this policy. So my role, it will be able to assume this policy as well. And remember, I have created an uh, access key and secure key, and I have configured an AWS CLI also with this user, which we will be seeing the next step. See here, in the next step, I'm saying we need an EC2, preferably Linux machine, because we need to run some Python commands. 
and uh, I have configured the AWS CLI with this user. So here I am in my uh, Linux machine and AWS CLI is also configured. So if you have not done that, go ahead and do that as well. So the next step is registering a manual snapshot registry. What happens here is uh, we need to tell our Elasticsearch cluster where my S3 bucket is and it has privileges to that. So these are the steps to configure that. All we have to do is just go ahead and run these commands in our AWS CLI. So let me install the package that is required for uh, Python to be installed. So I'm just going to install that and that is done. There will be one more package that needs to be installed. That is this AWS auth. Let us go ahead and install that as well. So if it is already installed, you will be getting this message saying requirement already satisfied. If not, it will go ahead and install it. The next step is going ahead and adding the repository there. So here we are in the code. The most important pieces in this code is I have highlighted here as well. We need to update the host here. You see here the host uh, name that will be coming from your endpoint that is here, this one. And that we need to change it here. And then extra region, if your uh, Elasticsearch cluster is in a different region, then you will have to change this one. And finally, there is a one more thing that we need to change here in the payload section also, the region. And then the bucket name, if you have a different bucket name, for example, I'm currently using a bucket which is 001. And then uh, this role ARN also has to be changed. So once all this thing is done, you just need to copy paste it into your uh, AWS CLI command line. Here I have pasted the entire code in my notepad so that we can edit everything here. So I have changed my host name and then I have changed my region and also I have given my bucket name here and then the region and also the role ARN. So I'm just going to copy the entire thing and put it into my CLI now. So let us paste it here and press enter. So this file gets created here. All we have to do now is run this file. I'm going to run the file as Python followed by my temp registry. Yep, so there seems to be an error. Just let me quickly look at it. And looks like I made a small error while copy pasting the URL. You see here the URL is not exactly the correct one. And remember, I have also made this error before you need to have a trailing slash at the end of the host. So let us go ahead and correct the URL and try it again. Here I am, I'm just going to check it again. My URL is correct, my region is correct, and then my path name. This is also another configurable variable. You can change this one, my snapshot repo is the repository where the indexes are going to be stored. And that is also good with me. This is my bucket name and this is my air and everything seems fine. Let me copy this. Just going to let us create some space here. So my file has been created. I'm just going to change the permissions of that file now. And then, so it's okay. Let us go ahead and uh, register our repository. If everything is fine, I should be getting a 200 okay here. So my repository has been registered and we are all good here. So we can go ahead and trigger our manual snapshots now. So you see here, we have done all this step. We have executed our uh, registration process and we also got this output. So the final step is we have done all the prerequisites and we are going to take our manual snapshots. And when you're taking a manual snapshot, you need to give a couple of uh, information so the name of the snapshot repository, for example, in our case, this is going to be uh, my snapshot repo. That is my snapshot repository name and then name of the snapshot itself. If you are going to take it every day, you do something like a date format or you can have a name for that, like a text string or anything. So let us go ahead and trigger it. You can use a curl command or any of the requests that you can make. So let us go back to our uh, CLI now. Let us go ahead and put in our today's date format I have used. And once you submit your request, you should be getting this uh, prompt saying it has been accepted and true. And it usually takes some time for the process to get completed. 
So what happens in the background is your request is taken and Amazon is going to index all the uh, documents that are there in your cluster and going to trigger the backup. So you can go ahead and use your Elasticsearch cluster while this backup process is happening. But remember that any new documents that are being added after this point where you trigger your backup, those will not be there in your backup. Uh, so it's not instantaneous. It's going to take some time, but it also means that you are freed up uh, your time from your cluster so you don't see a blip in your disk usage or utilization you can continue using it without any problems so if you want to know what is happening whether my snapshot is completed the command is something like this earlier we saw the put command now we are going to do a get command to see whether my snapshots are getting completed or not so let's just go ahead and query our cluster to see whether my snapshots have been completed so you can see here it is still success is zero and state is in progress. It is. It usually takes about to five to 10 minutes for the whole process to complete. I'm just going to give it a while. It has been a few minutes. So let us go ahead and try and see whether uh, my backup has been completed. I'm just going to query it again. And there you go. You see there my state has been success and about 216 uh, documents have been copied there. So let us go to our S3 bucket and see what has happened there. So here we are, I'm just going to refresh my screen here. So you see here, all the indices have been updated here. If I go here, there are a lot of indices there and each of them will have some data that is from my Elasticsearch cluster. So that is how you take your manual snapshots from your Elasticsearch cluster, which you can use it for importing into another domain or keep it for your own SIF keeping for audit purposes or any other reason. So if you have any trouble in going and setting it up, put them in the comment section. We will be learning from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.